nail-biting finish to this one. The Raptors find a way to come away with the 116-109 win in overtime in D.C. With the win, the Raptors get back to within one game of 500. They push the Wizards back one game underneath the Raptors. And it was a must win for the Raptors. But you know what? I was thinking about it as the Raptors were going on to win this. Isn't it crazy? Where have we come to? Where a game against the 9-10 seed is the biggest game of the year. It's a must win game. Man, our expectations. It's kind of tough. But let's break down the game, shall we? First quarter, you can tell the Raptors were more engaged. Look, it started very similar to last game. Where Kuzma scored the first 10, and it was a 10-0 lead. While Porzingis scored the first 7, and it was 7-0. The Raptors then battled back, and it was kind of back and forth for the rest of the quarter. It was 30-26 Washington after one quarter of play. And in the second quarter... The Raptors dug in defensively, and you really saw it in the second quarter, them digging in, contesting, just being really hard. to. OG was phenomenal defensively in that second quarter. 27-23 Raptors in the quarter, and you are tied heading into halftime. So you're not in bad shape. you got to find a way to come out strong in the third. They do that. The Raptors come out in the third quarter, and they make a statement. They play incredible defense. They had scored 33. The ball's humming. They're making shots. Gary's buzzing. And you're at 33. You are plus 7. 33-26 in the quarter. And plus 7 for the game. To this point. We go to the 4th. It's closing time. Is it 7 or 6? I don't know. I could have got my math wrong. I think they're up by 7. Never mind. Because Fred hit that 3 at the end. When they were up by 4. But in the 4th quarter... When the Raptors had their biggest lead at one point, it was 11. They were doing phenomenal, making shots. They were getting stops. Gary was just just not missing. And then it unraveled. Then the Raptors, they had like a 10-0 run or something where the Raptors didn't score for four minutes. And we're like, there's the patented Raptors drought. And let's fast forward to the end of the quarter, at the, the, the end of the game, or end of the regulation time, I guess. With 30 seconds to go, Raptors up three. Who takes the three to tie it? DeLon Wright. Of course it is. What a miserable day for sports fans. For Toronto, at least. We all know how the Leafs did. That was terrible. But DeLon Wright ties it. and They have a chance to win at the buzzer. They miss it. Thank God Bradley Beal missed it. It goes to overtime. And in overtime, the Raptors actually dominate it. And I got a couple of plays I want to talk about here. With a minute 53 to go, the game is tied at 107. Fred crosses the timeline. All right. And he gives it off to Pascal, who drives, gets the help Kuzma over. Fred, corner three, drills it. Big shot putting the Raptors up by three. We move forward. 49 seconds left. Only up by one. Gary drives. Scotty gets it. Fred, corner three, drills it again. Raptors up four, and that is all she wrote. Look, when I was watching the game, Fred missed some big threes late in regulation to put the game away and all that. And I was ready to harp on him for it. However, there's nothing I can say because he hit two massive threes in overtime to propel the Raptors to the 116-109 WNOT. Let's get into these player stats because I want to break down certain guys. Jakob Pertl got in foul trouble. And he was really having problems guarding guarding uh, Porzingis in space. And it was really, really tough to watch. End of the game with 14 points, 5 boards, 6 of 8 shooting, 2 of 3 from the line. Not a terrible stat line, but again, he only played like not even 30 minutes. He was in foul trouble for a good bit as well, but... Look at the end of the game, right? Who do they close it with? They took him out and put Scotty back in. So you had Fred, Gary, OG, Pascal, and Scotty on the floor to close out regulation and overtime. So it tells you 
what uh, what type of night Yak had, had in the office. He did have an incredible poster alley oop from Fred, though. But uh, rough night there. OG, after having a phenomenal line offensively a few nights ago, yeah, he struggled a lot. Six points, three boards, two assists, two of eleven shooting, two of two from the line, zero of six from three. Had a steal on the block, but defensively, I thought he was just getting after it. He really did get after it right from the get-go, and you needed him to. But offensively, you need more than what you what he gave. I'm not saying you need the 26 he gave you a couple nights ago. No. But 6-3 and 2 on 2 of 11 shooting at 0 of 6 from 3, eh, it's just not good enough. And the threes, more often than not, are wide open, right? See those And corner threes. You want him to hit those. Scotty B, it frustrates me to no end sometimes when he just doesn't look to score. When he does, I mean, how many times recently have we seen him get a guy in the post and then like a little fade fade jump shot and he drills it? It's been nice. They said today, I think inside the, within 10 feet, he's shooting like 55% from the field on the season, which is great when he shoots it. You know, 12 points, three boards, six assists, shot six of 11 from the field, missed the one free throw he took, did not take a three. However, defensively, he was getting after it. It was a plus 15 while he was on the floor. Scotty recently has just, just been tough defensively. Really, really tough. And I'm proud of him for it. I really am. Fred Van Vliet, 25 points, four boards, 10 dimes. Shot 9 of 16 from the field, 1 of 1 from the line, 6 of 11 from 3, 3 steals, 2 blocks, and a plus 10. Look, there's a lot of Fred haters out there. And look, I'm not going to defend the guy because he hasn't been great. Especially the last two games shooting the ball. Let's be real, all season he hasn't shot the ball well. But tonight, he did. Even though, like I said, he could have made some big shots in regulation... But missed them, but redeemed himself with two big-time corner threes set up by, you know, Gary and Scotty on the last one and then Pascal on the first one. But you got to make those shots, and he did. Pascal Siakam, dude just did, like, like Scotty, just did not look to shoot. He really didn't. The length really took him out of it. The, the Porzingis on the inside, the Gafford on the inside really took Pascal out of the paint. You know, 15 points, 4 boards, 7 assists, and you're thinking those numbers are bad. Percentage must be terrible. 5 of 10 from the field. 5 of 5 from the line. Only took 1-3, missed it. But at 4 steals. It's a weird game for Pascal Siakam. And uh, Gary, look. We talked about it in the last video, guys. How bench scoring has been awful. It was darn right abysmal. In the last game against the Wizards. Where Gary put up a season low. Was it 4 points or 7 points or something like that? Um, but tonight he rebounded and just carried at points during this game. 26 points, five boards, four assists, 11 of 18 from the field, missed the one free throw, was four of seven from three, two steals in the game. I thought Gary was outstanding. There were a few times where I thought he was heat checking himself with some tough jumpers, but look, when you're dialed in like the way he was today, I'm okay with him taking one or two of those per game. Really nice night for GT. Team stats? Rattler shot, here we go, 52% from the field, 40% from three, albeit that's a lot of credit to you know, Fred Van Vliet and, uh, and and Gary. Because, let's be honest, Pascal missed his one three, Scotty missed his, uh, he didn't take a three, OG missed all six, and you shot 40% from three. Those guys got it done, did Freddie, Freddie and Gary from distance. 71% from the free throw line, not great. They shot 51% from the field, 58% from three. It's just not good enough defensively, guys. It really isn't. Allowing these wide open threes. 86% from the free throw line. Actually, I did not write down the possessions because I was too flustered with the Leaf game. Let's be real. But um, I'm guessing with them shooting you know, a much better percentage from three or a similar percentage from the field goal, from the field, and they lost by seven, I'm guessing we won the battle on the... Um, on the glass or on the yeah actually we were only plus one ten nine on the offensive glass but uh, extra shots 15 
Robert took 90 field goals to their 75. There's your answer, right? Extra opportunities. And you know where that comes from? Turning the ball over. That's where the Raptors' bread and butter is. Turning teams over, getting in the fast break. We talked about it in the last one, how they didn't do that. They lost in the fast break, and it was rough to watch. Well, what do they do today? 24-14 in turnovers. The Raptors turned the Wizards over 24 times, leading to 34 points. Right? 19-4 in the fast break, 34-16 in points off of turnovers. That right there is the reason the Raptors won this game today. No other way of looking at it. They did what they're supposed to do. But now it gets really tough. They have the hardest schedule in all of the NBA, I believe, the rest of the season. And the next game for the Toronto Raptors is not until uh, Monday night. It's a 9 p.m. tip-off in Denver, taking on the Nuggets, who are 45-19. and 19. They've won three straight. They're 8-2 and two in their last 10. And oh yeah, by the way, they're second in the entire NBA. They're first in the Western Conference. Now I can sit here and say, well, Raptors go in there, they win. It's a statement game. Look, we are three quarters of the way done this season. We know what the Raptors are. If they find a way to beat Denver, it ain't no statement game. It's a game that the Raptors need to find a way to win to get back to 500 because they're back one game under. And if this team wants any thought of having home play-in games, you got to get on a roll fast. But you barely squeaked out a game tonight by seven in overtime to the 10th seeded Wizards where you turn them over an absolute ton. You think that's going to happen against Denver? Probably not. So we'll see what happens. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping the Raptors just play some phenomenal basketball and just find a way to win that game. It'd be a hell of a start to the, the that West Coast swing, wouldn't it? All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one if you enjoyed the video and, uh, and the game today. Because I'm so used to thinking about this leaf game. It's just painful. Hit that like button. If you guys enjoyed it, hit the subscribe button. If you guys not already, comment down below your thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like, would you not like from today's game? For the Toronto Raptors, the Twitter and Instagram links are down below. So follow the same EDM. You guys will have great stuff. The Discord link is down below as well. The all new TikTok link is down below as well. All right. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And I will talk to you guys, Jay Zishin, on Wednesday, wrapping up this past week's ball games, including today's 18 5 crazy game where they scored, what, 10 runs without having it out recorded. Just insane stuff today uh, between, uh, for the Jay Spring training. But uh, we'll talk about that on Wednesday. For the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, whatever's going on there. They, they, they play the Devils on Tuesday, 7 o'clock in Jersey. We'll see what happens. And as for the Raptors, they're back in action on Monday in Denver, taking on the Nuggets, 9 p.m. tip-off. We'll see what happens there. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the game today. We'll talk to you guys then.